Hey guys, what is up? This is Harry and welcome back to my channel. So as you can see over here, I'm playing the newly launched Apex Legends mobile game using a wireless controller. And this controller is neither an Xbox nor a PlayStation controller, which are essentially the only controllers supported in the game. This is Cosmic Byte's Ares wireless gamepad. And in this video, I'll be showing you guys how you can easily use any controller of your choice to play Apex Legends mobile. So let's get started. Scanning the area. Need to recharge my shields. They spotted me. I'm taking shots. Reloading. Alright, so right now I have not connected any controller to my phone, which by the way is the OnePlus 6T currently running on Android 11. If we head over to the game settings and click on the controller option, we get to see the keys that are pre-mapped here and there is no option whatsoever to map those keys to my gamepad. So the only thing we need to do here in order to connect this controller or any controller for that matter, apart from the phone itself of course, is an app known as Mantis which basically allows us to map the controls on the phone screen to our gamepad. So let's open up Google Play Store and search for Mantis. Click on the option that says Mantis Gamepad Pro Beta and now go ahead download and install the app on your phone. Once the app is downloaded, click on open. And on the top, click on the option that says tap to start Mantis Buddy. You'll be able to see the on device option here which allows you to set up the app on your phone itself without a PC or even a second device. Click on this option. Here you'll be able to see the instructions. Go on and read them if you like but I'm just gonna show you what all needs to be done in order to set up this thing. And the first thing we need to do now is to enable the developer options. So let's head over to the phone settings. Scroll down and select about phone and tap on the build number 7 times in order to enable developer options. You might get a prompt to enter your phone pin in order to enable it. Since I have already done that, I'm getting a prompt saying that there is no need to tap here as I'm already a developer. Once that is done, return to the previous menu and click on the system option. Now you should be able to locate the developer options. Go on and click on that. Scroll down and enable both the options wireless ADB debugging and wireless debugging. A side note here, if you are not able to locate wireless ADB debugging, it's alright just make sure that the wireless debugging option is enabled. The wireless debugging option usually comes in Android 11 and above devices while the wireless ADB debugging option comes in devices below Android 11. But even though my phone is currently running on Android 11, I'm able to see both the options here. Once that is done, simply click on the wireless debugging option to enter its menu. Now let's return to the Mantis application and click on connect. It will now ask you to enter a pairing code and a port number and both of these things can be found in the wireless debugging menu we had just opened. So now let's go into the split screen mode so that both these applications can be viewed together. Once that is done, click on the option that says pair device with pairing code. And now we have both the required things in a pop-up window. Let's go on and enter both the pairing code and port number. The port number is the five digit number after the IP address as you can see over here. Once that is done, click on the pair button and it'll start attempting to pair. It'll take about a minute to pair it successfully and that is when you will get the prompt saying Mantis Buddy is connected. Now you can go on and close the split screen mode and head back to the main menu in the Mantis application. On the top, you should be able to see that it is connected now. Alright, so now let me go ahead and connect my controller. You might need to use an OTG adapter such as this one in order to connect a dongle if your controller comes with one. As soon as I connect it, we can see here that one gamepad is connected. So now let's add the game Apex Legends Mobile by clicking on this add button. Locate and add the game and go back. And click on the Apex Legend Mobile icon that appears under games. A prompt will appear to enable the Mantis floating widget. Click on the allow button. Locate the app Mantis and enable the option. And the game will start automatically. Now you should be able to see this floating widget on the screen and what we now need to do is to map the keys to our gamepad. 
in order for us to do that, let's head over to the free practice match. Once you're in there, click on the floating widget and click on the plus sign. You'll see two pages here. We need to go to the first page as the second page is activated only when you purchase the pro version, which we will not be covering in this video. And from here, you can map any keys on the screen simply by first selecting an option and then placing it wherever you like. For example, let's first map the L stick like this. Now the right stick. Now all of the keys one by one. You can even place the d-pad if you like, but this game doesn't require a d-pad so I won't be mapping it. And now you're ready to go. It works perfectly. And you can use the same app to play other games as well such as Call of Duty and Genshin Impact. Well that is it guys, hope you found the information provided useful. Like and subscribe to support my channel. Take care and catch you in the next one.